Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you this morning and to be with you in Whitford again. Thank you, Pastor Alan, for the kind invitation to come and share with us this morning. As a family, we've just actually been away visiting family up in Norwich, and uh, we've just spent a week there with different ones. Aren't families great? But what's even more better is to be again with the family of God. And you know, we haven't been here for quite a number of years, but there's something about coming back and it feels like coming home. There's a connection. There's something that happens that is absolutely fantastic. Please forgive me if I start to move around. I do that quite a bit. I don't like being stuck in one place. Um, but there we are. But actually, there's a number of things that have happened since we've been with you last. Um, one thing I would have liked to have been able to do, but unfortunately we can't, but this summer we had the privilege as a family of visiting Brazil and being on mission in Brazil. We had round about three weeks in total, uh, traveling there, ministering, traveling back. And it was absolutely incredible to see what God is doing in that great nation. We had the privilege of, well I did, of ministering nearly every single day. Um, They even wrote Margaret in from time to time to do something. And what would often happen is, I don't know many of you remember, but I play the keyboard, but um, from time to time we would be asked, ah, Margaret, you sing, David can play. Not that we're going to cause you to suffer this morning (laughs) in any shape or form. (laughs) But it was a real honor and privilege to be able to minister the word of God in that nation. I can honestly say I've been to the edge of hell and I've preached in glory. One of the suburbs of the city is called Hell. And one of the places we went to was Glory. (laughs) And it was great actually being able to minister in Glory. And we saw God touch people's lives. We prayed for the pastor in that church. He had a, a really bad back. We prayed and God healed her. Actually, she wasn't the only one that we prayed for and see God do something amazing. We saw God touch others as we prayed for them in that place or in that uh, whole area. And we were privileged to be in the uh, city of Patos, which is in the northeast of Brazil. And it was just absolutely fantastic to see the way that God did some amazing things. And it's lovely to be with you this morning here in Wickford. One of the things that we've been looking at back in our home church, oh, there's something else perhaps I ought to mention that some of you might be interested to know. And that is that um, since we were here, I've had the privilege of being involved for the last 14 years as a chaplain to my local police force. And about two years ago, I was invited and I'm now part of the national AOG chaplaincy team with the portfolio of emergency services. So caring for chaplains who minister to those who work in the fire service, in the ambulance service, in the police service and also the Coast Guard. And it's a real privilege and honour to be able to encourage different ones as we seek to share Jesus to those who seek to serve us in those frontline roles. God is so good. But one thing that we've been doing back home is that we've been looking particularly at the whole thing of the presence of God and how we need to know God's presence day by day. Thank you. But we've also been talking as part of that how that there are times when as believers in Christ we need to also go to war with the enemy. 
And so there's one thing which we often find when we fight the enemy of our souls, and that is that we need to be those who are encouraged. Anybody struggling this morning with feeling a little down or struggling? You need a lift, you need an encouragement. Because actually I think it'd be true to say that all of us from time to time struggle and need encouraging. But the thing is, there are so many around us and so many things would actually seek to discourage if you have a Bible, please can you turn with me this morning to 1 Samuel and chapter 30. Just going to read a few verses there. <clears throat> 1 Samuel chapter 30. And it says this, David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it had taken captive the women and all who were in it, both young and old. They didn't kill any of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives have been captured. Hinnom of Jezreel and Abigail, the wife of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself or found strength. Another other words, say David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue, he answered, you will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to the Besor Ravine, where some stayed behind. For 200 men were too exhausted to cross the ravine, but David and 400 men continued the pursuit. Go down a little bit further, and we're going to pick up from verse 17. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day and none of them got away except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken including his two wives nothing was missing young or old boy or girl plunder or anything else they had taken David brought everything back Verse 24, went, sorry, 21, then David came to the 200 men who'd been too exhausted to follow him and were left behind at the Besor Ravine. They came out to meet David and the people with him. As David and his men approached, he greeted them, but all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, because they didn't go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. But David replied, No, my brothers, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and handed over to us the forces that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the men who stay with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All shall share alike. David made this a statute and ordinance for Israel from that day to this. Father, we pray this morning that as we look at your word, that Father, you would strengthen, you would encourage, and we would be those who go from this place knowing a fresh touch of you upon our hearts and lives, we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I'm sure there will be some of us this morning who face struggle. There will be those who will feel slightly discouraged. I have to say that even I myself this morning could be a little discouraged as I didn't get much sleep last night. Nothing to do with Margaret snoring beside me. <clears throat> but actually, I can remember as I was laying on or in bed last night, my mind kept going to all the good things that we've seen God do over the past few weeks, months, and years. You know, there's something about remembering who God is and what God has done. Because it does something to us. It causes us to once again lift our eyes and look and see how great our God is. One of the songs that we did quite often when we were in Brazil was, How Great Is Our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And there are times that actually as we even walk our Christian walk, those of us who have that right relationship with God through Jesus Christ, that sometimes we can forget just how good God is. But I'm not here to condemn this morning, but just to remind us that we need to be those who lift up our eyes and see how good is our God. In fact, it tells me in verse 6 there that David was greatly distressed. There's another word for that word distress there, which is the word, it means to be discouraged. It means to be down. But he says, David found strength in the Lord his God. David encouraged himself in God. And the idea of encouraging is to build up, to strengthen to be courageous to recover so that we might be able to go again. But there's something that we need to ask ourselves. How can we build ourselves up in God if we have no relationship with God? But you know, we don't need to be those who have no relationship with God. Because all we need to do is to come and to ask that he would become our friend, our saviour. In fact, the Bible is very clear and it tells us that we need to recognise that we need him. We cannot live our lives without him and we need him alone to be able to deal with all those things that we've done wrong and to invite him into our lives to change us and to make a difference. A personal relationship with Jesus. To be reconciled with him. And we will actually find a change of heart, a change of attitude, a change of outlook. We simply need to come and say, Jesus, I I'm sorry for the wrong that I've done. Will you forgive me? And will you come into my life and turn my life around? And you know, this morning, here in Whitford Christian Centre, in Crouch Drive, if we don't know, we can simply pray that prayer and ask him into our hearts and lives. Those of us who have perhaps been walking on the journey with Jesus for a while and we might be struggling, all we need to say again is, Jesus... We need your help. Jesus, will you come this morning and help? You know, the lovely thing about Jesus is he turns our mourning into dancing. He turns our darkness into light. He can take off those 
Clouds that feel like they're weighing us down. It says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. All we simply need to do is to take it off and say, Jesus, will you take it? And the lovely thing is, he will. And he loves to give us something fresh, something new. Sorry, you saw what I did there. But you know, we are actually also encouraged in Philippians chapter 4 to not be anxious about anything. You know, there are times when we can be incredibly anxious. I wasn't quite sure what to expect this morning. And there could have been a slight touch of anxiety for me. But it's a case of, Father, you've got this. I hand it to you. You're able to handle and deal with that far better than I could on my own. And you know, God doesn't go, what, you again? He welcomes us with open arms and loves to turn our morning into dancing as we've mentioned hallelujah it says David encouraged himself in God and how many times do we need to remind ourselves how great and powerful our God is in fact doesn't it tell us in Psalm 16 That it is in his presence that there is fullness of joy. There is the strength we need. And is it no wonder that actually David, as he finds himself there in Psalm 51, he says, don't cast me away from your presence. Because God, that's where you are and that's where I want to be. There's a sense in which actually here in Chapter 6 of verse 30 of 1 Samuel, David finds himself in an in-between moment. The people, it tells us, were talking of stoning him. Because they were bitter. They were in distress themselves. And you know, there are times actually when we get so discouraged and so struck we're struggling so much that we want to take our frustrations out on others of course nobody in Wickford ever wants to do that do they <clears throat> they just were so anguished they were struggling And you know, there are times when actually we inadvertently might choose somebody to have a go at. We know that David found strength in the Lord his God, but actually if we notice earlier in that verse that David himself was invested in that moment. He too was struggling. His own wives had been taken But how we act and react can also have a bearing on others. And there are times when we go through things and do we act and react as Jesus would do. You know, for many of these ones there, they felt like potentially there was no tomorrow. The potential of their legacy had been taken from them. Their children, their wives, their sons, their daughters... But I noticed that David was not willing to lie down with them and also feel sorry for himself. It says he strengthened himself in God. And you know, there are times when we too need to protect our courage and our strength. 
And this can only be done, of course, as we spend time with God. Ourselves. He is our strength. Our courage. Our fortress. Our rock. Our deliverer. You see, if we try to do things in our own strength, what happens? We usually fall flat on our face. And yet, if we go to Father God, we find all that we need. And more. It is resting in His presence that we are refreshed and we are renewed. I'm sure Pastor Alan can remember the song from donkeys years ago. It encourages us to count your blessings, name them one by one. One. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings. And how many of us actually take time to sometimes reflect and count the blessings of God? Proverbs 25 and verse 25 talks of good news from a distant place is like cold water to a weary soul. It's refreshing. It's pleasant. And we notice that after David had encouraged himself in God, he was then able to run after the enemy. He was then able to overtake the enemy and he was able to recover all that the enemy had taken but it started in that place of finding encouragement in the Lord his God I'd like to read if I can Psalm 145 says this, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you 
And you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. And loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him in truth. To all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name. Forever and ever. I'm sure if I was to encourage us this morning just to turn to our neighbor and to say one word of something good that God has done, all of us would be able to say something. Just one thing. Why not quickly? Turn to the person beside you and say one good thing that God has done. Even this morning. Quick, go. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it amazing how immediately there's a heart, there's a buzz, there's a hum in the room as we begin to share with one another the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me. All my life, you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Father, this morning, thank you for your goodness. Father, this morning, thank you for your faithfulness father thank you for all the amazing things that you have done for us in and through jesus father even as we face this week we pray that we would again see and know the goodness of our god That we would be able to say, I have known the hand of God's goodness in the land of the living. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, today, we acknowledge and we recognize again that you will fulfill your purpose for me. Because your love, O Lord, endures forever. And so, Father, we pray that we might be those who know your goodness. That we might be able to give you thanks. Because greater is he who is with us than he who stands against us. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.